I'm ready. Yeah, we're good. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Friday session with wonderful Cindy Briggs. I'm so excited to, to introduce her. We've been friends for many years. I know her art and I admire what she's doing in the last few years. So she will present um, her paintings and her style and do a little. Um, please help us unmute. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, Did you hear you? me? Yeah, we're good. Awesome. Okay. Here, Cindy. Welcome, darling, and so good to have you. Thank you for being here for us. So I give you the yeah. word. It's so great to see you and to be here. Representing Daniel Smith. So what I'm going to do today is a scene from Zion, but before we um, do the painting, I have a little presentation for you just so you can see some of my work and some of the things I'm doing. Thank you. All right. so, okay, let's share the screen. Mm -hmm. Just a quick reminder for our guests, um, kindly help, like, let's just mute our mic at this stage. And then later on, if we have questions for Cindy, um, can you help unmute the mic? Cindy, would you would you accept uh, um, questions while you're doing your slideshow and your demo? Are you going to be comfortable or you would prefer afterwards? <laughs> um. I'm totally comfortable answering questions. Sometimes I might pause because I may need to finish one little thing. And but I love hearing from the audience. It makes me feel like we're together. Great. Thank you. All, All right. right. So we'll just share screen now. All right. So I'm taking you to Southern Utah. And I have a little slideshow for you um, next. Some of the, there's been some great things happening this year. I, I have my NWS, National Watercolor Society signature, um, just got accepted into Splash and I taught for watercolor life. I'm loving working with Daniel Smith watercolors and I'm gonna show you a few of my paintings um, next. These are all Southern Utah. Zion and the Canyon Lands. The painting in the center is the is one that I've been getting a lot of attention for lately. So I'm sharing that one. Next. I also love to paint in Europe. And you may start noticing that I love Daniel Smith um, earth tones. They they are a big part of my paintings, and I'll be using some today. Next. I like to say I paint the light. It doesn't matter what the subject is. And this time of year, I love getting back into flowers. And next, my portraits have been um, one of my highlights lately too. I'm teaching for the Utah Watercolor Society in two weeks. And I taught a portrait for Watercolor Live last month. So it's it's really fun to go in that direction. Next. One of my favorite things to do is paint in my sketchbook. And Teresa Gessling and I take people around the world to paint. I'll be sharing more about that coming up. But like um, many of you, you like to travel and paint. And I love painting in those sketchbooks. Whatever the subject is, it seems that I had Utah, um, Southern Utah, Europe, and um, California quite a bit. Some of my favorite subjects are in those locations. Okay, next. And let's see, I have online programs on my website. And these are all currently open full year programs. I would say they're all open. 
they open at different times of the year. And so you can just go to my website and take a look at those if you want. Right now I have portraits open and how to mix watercolors for beginners. Thank you. Next. I also teach for other organizations. Um, oh, I have the painting trips. There you see Teresa Gessling and I at, at the bottom and with our group, we've been doing these for over 20 years and our brand's trip is sold out. We are um, filling up Sicily. We'd love to have you come. And as you can see, there are other workshops coming along too. All right, next. Do you mind, do you mind spending a moment telling us about the one in Aurora, Nebraska? <laughs> Nebraska. Um, you know, they called me and they have the center, a retreat center, and they wanted me to come in as the plein air artist. On the art farm? It's not the art farm. It's it's a, a special event that they do once a year. Wonderful. This, yeah, my husband's from Nebraska. So when they asked, I'm like, yeah, I'll go. That sounds nice. All right, next, Sicily. I'm featuring Sicily because that is our upcoming trip in October. And Teresa and I went there years ago and we're excited to return. And we'll be painting in journals like I showed you earlier. All right, next. Let's see, I teach for a number of organizations like the Smithsonian Arts Studios, um, French as the University of Utah, Terracotta, and various watercolor societies. So I'm I'm just totally in it right now. I'm really enjoying being able to teach and having this online access for classes. I started that in 2019 and it's it's been great. So thanks for giving me this opportunity to share today. All right, one more. If you want to reach me, here's all my um, what, social media and my website. You probably have that now, citybriggs.com. If you sign up for my newsletter, you get a link to my Brana Reds um, video with a PDF. So you can try that on your own time. But I thank you for watching this and I look forward to connecting with you. All right, are you ready for a painting? Thank you, Cindy. That was wonderful to see your work. And Thank what are you going to demo us to, um, for us today? I am painting the Watchman, which is at the um, entry of Zion in Springdale. Wow. If you go to Zion and you haven't gotten your tickets to get in, you can sit at a, at a cafe and paint this. You don't have to even go into the park. It's just right there. And it's called the Watchman because it's right at the entry of the park. And as you can see behind me, I love those warm earth tones and dropping in other colors. And so I've, I'm going to take you through that step-by-step step as far as I can. I have some finished paintings in different colors that I can show you at the end. So we'll okay. see how the timing goes. You might uh, watch the clock because we have one hour for the whole event, right? Okay, thank okay. you, Cindy. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Oh, thanks. I do have some new colors, Daniel Smith colors that I'm going to share. Um, the above titanium, and you, I'll have you put that on the art screen only. You don't need to see me. Above titanium, these are not colors that are actually in my palette. I'll use quite a few. I do have a dot card now, so you can order that if you'd like. I have Sedona Genuine. Actually, it goes with my nails. Um, Amazonite Genuine. Part of this is just whenever I demonstrated at the store, I always wanted to try out a new color. So this I've used a lot. 
um, lunar earth. It's great for these beautiful earth tones. So what I have is a drawing and I do have some of my students um, have paint along handouts to follow along. I will put that handout in my next newsletter. So there's, there's another reason to sign up. Other colors I'm going to use, and I'm just going to mix some puddles, Naples yellow, um, yellow ochre, permanent brown. For this first layer, I like mixing a peach with my orange and my Naples yellow. Uh, let's see, I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Sedona genuine, make a little puddle or a little pile of that lunar earth. I think I better put it on the side so I remember to say what I'm using. Um, buff titanium and this one is fun I looked online I'm like oh I want to try that one amazonite because it works like a turquoise but I could also make my greens out of that and when when I paint a subject like this I well often and I'll show you this this is a quick sketch of the same scene. So when I'm traveling, I'm doing quick sketches in my journal. And then when I get home, I go bigger. You know, if there's something I really want to spend some time on, I go bigger. And I approach this differently every single time I paint. Sometimes I paint the shadows first, and sometimes I paint the overall color first. And so what I'm gonna do just for time's sake is a wet and wet um, underpainting using my warm colors. And I have a dry version of this that I can grab. Otherwise we'd just sit here and watch the paint dry. Thank you for your messages. I see people, I see Eva from Sweden and James from Vegas. I see a lot of your names up there. Thank you, Peg, for seeing you love my newsletter. I send them out about twice a month. Now I've got oh, this works. I've got little corner marks on here that I usually erase. And it's a good idea when you have a drawing to soften your lines with the needed eraser. Okay, I do have a picture of this. Something else I want to point out is um, here's my photograph. And this is a no tan art. It's black and white. And what the no tan does is it simplifies the image into two values. And that helps you simplify and see the shapes. There's an app called the no tan app. And I think it's $6 or something like that. Um, I highly recommend that you get it. Now, I don't care about trying to match the colors that I see. I just want to get a nice, colorful underpainting. Oh, Cranacridone Gold. I could use some of that too. And I'll position the, the color on here, kind of how where I see Things. This is peach with Naples yellow and orange, pyrrole orange. Maybe I'll try some of my Sedona Genuine. See, I'm just letting the colors mingle and I'm not too concerned about getting it right where I need it. Um, buff titanium, I may have some buff titanium in there. This part's really fun. There we go. And I will, you know, look at this and see that that red dirt, peach, peachy red dirt, maybe here's some lunar earth, that comes down into here too. So I'm going to bring some of that color up in here. Cindy, you're also using 
semi-opaque colors. And it's wonderful to see that they work also as transparent. Your paintings are so transparent. And uh, that is a wonderful um, versatility of, of our colors that you can use them. Nevertheless, they are semi-precious. They still can look transparent and, and have the glow. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah, I'm pretty transparent in my paintings. Um, I do love the sediment quality mm -hmm. and some of the colors. I've always been a big fan of Daniel Smith for that. Like I have green appetite in my palette. I have um, also Rose of Ultramarine, which is a beautiful color that Daniel Smith has it was I have a 33 color palette but you know when you're teaching still you know you can't put you can't yeah. use color so you kind of need to narrow it down so see I'm just dropping colors on there and letting it mingle there we go I like this under being I did a couple of them, you know, thinking, well, I better have something ready in case something happens. Okay, orange. Here's that Sedona. I like the Sedona. It's nice and warm. And now I've got a variety of colors in here. That's kind of caused by a shadow. It's not as bright. This is it. Susan. Could you tell me uh, what your preference of paper is? Oh, good question. I am a total fan of the Fabiano, um, 25%, wait, the 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press paper. And I've been using Fabriano for about 20 years at least. My favorite is the 300 pound and Oh, soft press, which is a dream to paint on. And I don't mind 25% cotton, Fabriano, for a quick sketch. It's actually quite nice. Plus, Thank I you. Put, yeah. And a question about your, bre your brush also, Cindy. Oh, the brush is actually Teresa Gessling and I both use these um, black gold, Dynasty Black Gold 311 Quills. Um, we actually started using them at the store. Daniel Smith store carried them and we've been able to pick them up. You can get my supply list in my newsletter, my full supply list. And I can tell you where to find these at cindybriggs.com. But they're awesome brushes. Now and then I'll, you know, I'll grab another brush. And when I travel, like many of you, I will buy any brush <laughs> I see. You know, I, I just collect them because I have to try that one. But generally, this is what I recommend because this is about $16 and, you know, $12 are not expensive and they're great synthetics. All Thank right. You. Yeah, good questions. I like those. All right, this will not dry fast enough. So I have another one. And I'll put that down. There we go. I like that one, but it would it would take a while to dry it. So we're just gonna go to the next step and work on the shadows. Now, I had, I had shown you this before. I don't even need this. By having the black and white, I can, I can see easily where those shadows are. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Let's see. Put that there. And can I squeeze that in? There we go. And Cindy, at some point, could you tell us that the brand of the brush and the size? Oh, Daniel. No, not Daniel Smith. That's what I'm being with. Dynasty. Black gold 311 quill. 
and I have sizes double lot to size four. And today I'm mostly using the, the bigger, this was a four that I started with. And like I said, it's on my mailing list and I have um, ways to get it for less. Okay, I like to keep my palette fairly clean. And I am trying to keep this up as close as possible, but I'll pull this up just a little bit. There we go. You can see what I'm working from and that one there. All right, it's like you're here in my studio with me. Next, I put in the shadows. Now, I mentioned sometimes I put the shadows in first and sometimes I put in um, the underpainting first. Just depends on what I'm feeling. Uh, for my shadows, cool colors, I've got Rose of Ultramarine and Lavender and that Amazonite Genuine, which I am really enjoying that color. It's kind of like a turquoise. Not so different from other colors I've used at Daniel Smith, but for this, I think it'll be great. And what I want to show you here is I'm painting wet on dry and I want my colors to mingle. So I paint them next to each other and I will grab a oh, permanent brown. That'll be good. While it's still wet, I can have warm and cool colors in there. And I'll just go after the shadow shapes that I see. So what I love, Daniel Smith, um, there's such a variety of colors that you can't get anywhere else. Look at what the Amazonite is doing in there. It, it wants to take over a little bit, but I'm, I really like the glow that it I'm glows. getting. Doesn't it glow? Yes, it does. It's a beautiful color and I literally got it yesterday. I was thinking, I need to try something new. And because that's part of demonstrating for Daniel Smith is exploring all their wonderful colors. There we go. I've got my purple, my um, Sedona, genuine. Varied colors everywhere within the shadows. Now, if I painted every single shadow for you, this could take a while. But I did want to paint enough of them. So you can see how I'm utilizing warm and cool colors together. There we go. And it's easy to get lost in all the shapes. I don't worry about it too much because no one's gonna see it at exactly the same time that you see it. And if you miss a shadow, it's not gonna hurt anything. Sometimes I'll even just make up a shape in there. I do like to go a little darker at the base. Sometimes that holds the, the rocks down and keeps them from floating away. How's this looking? Okay. I've got some orange or peach. I rarely use pyro orange by itself. I tend to use it more um, with Naples yellow, but I like having it available as that bright on my palette. And like sometimes Can you, there's a question here from Sandy. Um, oh, is, good. Is your drawing freehand? Um, 
this one? No, because I, I drew it and then I traced it over and over again. This, this one's freehand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I often draw something loose and then I will repeat it. I kind of want some color. So you can see how I'm starting to put some shadow shapes in there. And vary my colors, play with the colors. I did this as a one color, two color, and three color painting. And is your paper stretched? No, it is not. I haven't done that since college. There, see all those colors in the shadows? Just beautiful. beautiful. Oh, thanks. I will do just a little bit more. And then I'll grab the next one because it's good to see um, how I get those shadows in and vary the color. One thing I want to point out is I use the side of my brush to put paint in, not the point. The point is great at the very end for little details, but you don't need to use it through the whole painting. I remember I was taking a Charles Reed class. <laughs> he came over and grabbed the paintbrush out of my hand. He's like, stop using the point so much. Use the whole brush. And so I give him credit for turning me to the side. <laughs> <laughs> It changed everything. Like, oh, that's so much easier to cover more area. He also said something else that sticks with me. He has a family friend, my a good friend of my aunt's. And um, sorry to see him go. I'm so grateful I got to paint with him. But he said it doesn't matter what colors you use as long as you get the values and the shapes right. And so I've been painting rocks for years and I love just changing the colors and seeing what happens. You're not limited by what you see. So yes, I, I do, um, like I said, I drew this out and then traced each drawing out. Let's see. And each time I paint the same thing, it'll change. The colors will vary. The, the shapes I decide to focus on vary. And it's always kind of a surprise what happens. So it's not like a painting that every time will turn out similar. Okay, and one thing I want to show you because I'm going to go to the next step is the strata lines. I, sometimes I'll paint those in and mess them up. And that's how I get strata lines in. All right, the next. So this is a little further along in some ways that uh, so it's got more shadows on it and it's starting to look more like um, the watch watchman. So if, here I am putting shadows in and then here I am just, I'm further along and you don't have to painstakingly watch me paint every shadow. And like I said, the shadows are, can be a little different 
each time. I actually like looking at my quick sketch that I did last to give me ideas on where to go with this. So I've got that nearby. It kind of keeps me from overdoing it, especially when I have 30 minutes to paint um, the rest of this, but I think we can do it. If not, I'll get pretty far and um, I'll show you the other ones I have. Okay, so I've got the same kind of colors in here. Um, Rose of Ultramarine. I haven't used my lavender. And I think lavender is such a miracle color. And I often will take it and paint it somewhat opaque and put a few spots of it here and there. I'll also paint with it in a transparent way. But I just wanted to put a few little dabs in there to show you. The, col the contrast between transparent and, and opaque sometimes is, is just beautiful. Another thing to move your eye through the painting. It does. It's like little dabs, step stones, stepping stones of color. I was really happy when Daniel Smith came out with lavender. It's, it's like a staple for me. And I'm sure many of you love that lavender. All right, so now you can see where I put in a little lavender. Oh, I can have turn one more light on. It's just a good light. I don't know if that helps. I'm surrounded by lights. Okay, um, this is an Alvaro Castagnet Neef brush. Um, I've also heard him at Watercolor Live, someone called him a pregnant brush. <laughs> I'm like, where's the pregnant brush? I want one of those. And then I realized I had quite a few of them back home. Um, you know, anytime you go to an event, you'll see something that you want to add. Let's see, I'm gonna use a little bit of this color to do some calligraphy in my rocks. There's some darker crevices. And while you don't need to do a lot of that, it's kind of fun that even using another color why this is delicate. Using other colors in there, it, it gives you a, such a fun free line. If you stay back from it, you know, you can almost let your paintbrush dance. This is fun. I'm past halfway through. What was the name of that paintbrush? Well, on his it says Neef, N-E-E-F. Um, uh, this one's called a uh, rigor, which is what I think I'd call it. Maybe that's what they called in Australia where he lives. Um, the Rislan rigor, I've got one there. And someone called it, <laughs> Gabriel might know, a pregnant brush at Watercolor Live, and I, it may have just been their term for it. But I'm, I don't use them very often. Oops, let's see. I wanna get back to that Amazonite. Yeah, it's the belly of the brush where it holds lots of water. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have seen a, just a really long brush that's called a rigger that's just really long hairs and this design allows it to hold more water so you don't have to keep refilling and refilling you can do a lot of calligraphy yeah it gives you a great line thank you i don't know who called it a pregnant brush but that kind of stuck with me 
Really, I also love this brush. I mainly use it for straight lines and uh, thinner lines. It's amazing from me, from Australia. Oh, thank you. Is it called yeah. the? Yeah, Neve from Alvaro Castanier. Uh, it is, yeah, Alvaro. I love it. Of course, when um, we we had him at the Northwest Watercolor Society uh, convention, Teresa and I were in charge of that, and he was there. I bought all of his brushes because, of course, I want to be like Alvaro <laughs> and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, he is a grand one, and we need him also to do some demo very soon. Oh, Let's hope. He's super nice. Yeah. I love this guy. He's and nothing like a new, another brush and another color. Yeah, I keep changing the color and putting in some of those lines. And now I'm going to take um, my size two and I'm going to cut through some of this to create strata lines. Well, we all learn from each other over time, right? the um and support i think artists watercolor artists are especially very supportive of each other and i know i've i've learned from quite a few of you too and other people that have been working with daniel smith over the years this line right here is bugging me so see what's great about that paper i use that fabriano paper is you can just Lift the line by getting it wet. Cindy, our friends over at Facebook want to know what size was the uh, the rigger brush. Oh, 4,400 is the number on that one. The other one has already wandered away. This is this is out of our rows. Thank you. Does it size? He, he says. He has size six and eight. Oh, okay. I would get the six if you're going to get one of them. All right. So now I'm happy with that. It's working okay. I've got a little bit of a start down there. And what's all about this, it's got this big black hole. I don't want to emphasize that. I just like having the color that's up here down below. And I'll bring some more of that down here. My Sedona and Lunar Earth. I know you're all going to want one of those rigor brushes now. I've had a couple of them over the years, and I the, you have to be so careful not to bend them that I, I don't use them that often. But I think they all are pretty equally good. They call them Neef brushes, N-E-E-F. Yeah, that's what this one They're is. showing up. Yeah, that's what you had mentioned. And these brushes, I've been using my number two quite a bit. Isn't this fun? It's like, you don't have to be precise. When painting the rocks, I've already got the rocks working out for me pretty well up above. So I'm just adding more texture down below and using the side of my brush quite a bit. And I will bring in some of those green, the sagebrush, but I'm going to use that Amazonite instead. Cindy. Cindy, yeah. at this point, are you very careful that the layers you add are all transparent? And are you avoiding the granulating or the opaque colors for this step? Um, I tend to keep everything fairly transparent. I paint in a more of a coffee consistency um, versus milk. Uh, there's a little bit of milk in there, but I do keep it fairly transparent all the way through. I really get creamy with my paint, except for those few spots of lavender that I dropped in. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, my answers are making sense. 
All right, I have kind of a mess right there. I see 20 minutes, which means 15. So what I wanna do is put in some of my sage brush. And what I really like about my quick sketch is I didn't get too involved in it. And that reminds me to, to keep it loose and not overdo the sage brush. So I'm gonna use my Amazonite. I haven't even tried this. And let's see what it does with Naples yellow. Ooh, that's pretty. And I do wanna have some lavender nearby. I put some fresh paint in, so it's a little sticky. And some of my Rose of Ultramarine. Now, if you mix, um, just so you know, if you mix your um, lavender in with your rose or rose of ultramarine, you get a beautiful wisteria color that you can also buy from Daniel Smith. But if you don't have room for everything on your palette, that's kind of a nice way to get that color. I do like that this is kind of a turquoise. It's really beautiful. I don't remember using it um, before. So it's fun to get that. So I want to just suggest those bushes in there. And I can grab some of my purple now and then, some of my lavender, and have some interesting colors going on. I keep mixing that here. And like I said, if I put in every sage brush, it would take me a while. Well, you see, these are kind of like a plein air painting because you're working fairly fast. If I did a big painting of this, I'd probably slow down a little bit and get more defined, but I like the freshness of painting quickly. So this is Amazonite with Naples yellow. There we go. And like I said, I'll grab other colors, my lavender now and then. Oops. And Rose of Ultramarine. And this is a coffee consistency or skim milk. Some people call it that. By putting in that layer underneath, I've already got um, the color of the earth beneath it. And I don't, I, if I paint a little bit darker there, you kind of cover up where I put that. Oh, let's see, I'm gonna put in more to fill some of that in so it doesn't take too long. Yeah, it was nice to see everybody from Daniel Smith and a lot of my um, regular students are here. Thank you for coming and thank you everyone for being here and watching. I know some people are watching a video later once it's recorded, so I hope you're enjoying it. You have a lot of admirers. There are lots of people watching you, Cindy. I, invite, I, might, I invited even my granddaughter. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh, I, love, I hope she's here. Shout out to Kate if she decided to make it. She's four. All right. See, I can get tired of doing the dabbling, but 
it, it overall, it's looking okay. And where else? Oh, I've got some down in here. And I do want to put in Y <laughs> before you know it. It'll be time for that. Do you have any questions? Sandy? Yes. How has traveling uh, to Europe helped you grow as an artist? Oh, that's a good question. I... To me, when I started traveling, it opened up a whole new world for me because I really didn't travel until I started painting um, full time. Um, there's nothing like being there in person and painting from life. And I try to go into that same mindset when I'm painting in my studio. You know, if, if you just work from photos all the time, you don't always know how to see and draw things. So being there, I, it's magical. You get to experience it with all your senses. There we go. And I don't, I kind of have a triangle here and a big circle there. So I want to break, I'm going to break that up a little bit. And there we go. See what that does? You have to pay attention to all the shapes that are happening. That's more interesting. And this sagebrush kind of goes everywhere, but I don't want it to overpower my warm colors. So I'm careful to minimize how much I use. All right, I'm going to paint in the sky here pretty soon. And then I get to show you other versions of the same painting. I painted it in one color. I painted it in orange and blue, or orange and cobalt teal blue. And I did one that's more golds and purples. So that'll be fun to share. Let's see. A little bit of light. Sin, did you draw on the painting before or after? Do I draw? The ink? Like oh, the ink. Mm -hmm. I start out with the ink. And then you paint over it. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I, I went to Alaska and I decided I'm just going to draw with, with my pen. And by the end, it was like three weeks. <laughs> by the end of the three weeks, I was so comfortable drawing with my pen that I, it, it's, it goes a lot faster and you just accept whatever you do. And I think that can be beautiful, you know? And I, I teach that in my quick sketch classes quite a bit. And it, people are always surprised. Oh, look what I did, you know? Let's see, let's break that up a little bit. Yeah, if we had more time, I'd pull out my journals and share those. That's working out okay. All right, Sky. I got a few shadows. I just want to bring a few of these darks. This is permanent brown, which is my basic brown. And I've found that by adding other colors to it, you can um, make quite a range of browns. So I only have one brown, even though I love, <laughs> look at all these browns I just bought. <laughs> Bronzite, transparent red, burnt scarlet, hematite, burnt scarlet, Zendona. Because I'm painting Zion pretty soon, I'm going back next 
in April and I'll be painting there. So I'm gonna have a lot of grounds to play with. Okay, I'm turning sideways because I want, it's just easier for me to work my way around the top of the ridge and clean out my palette. It helps if you have clean water, I've got an extra water. And something I should say, when you are rinsing out your brush, rinse out at the top because the sediment sinks down to the bottom and then drag your brush off the edge of your container. And that way you won't have puddles everywhere. But right now, I just wanna get my sky wet and I wanted to have so many of these already done, but life happens. They just got really busy, but I do have a couple more that I can show you. Let's see. Love that Amazonite. I can almost use that color in the sky, but I think it might overpower. So often I'll use lavender and cobalt blue. And that works nicely. I have actually I'm I'm referring to this quite a bit. It's a little different, but it's helping keep me loose rather than looking at the photograph. See, I'm gonna just suggest some clouds by painting around the clouds. Cindy, you have a lot of admirers on Facebook. John is watching from home, enjoying it in his Daniel Smith t-shirt. Oh, cool. Hi, John. Uh, no, this is an, a different John. Another John. Okay. Um, but uh, one question we have on this uh, Friday is, how do you know when a painting is finished? Oh, well, Rex Brands quote is in my head <laughs> that a painting is usually finished before you think it is and sometimes it's when the bus is leaving but <laughs> generally I like my paintings to be a little underdone rather than overdone so I will stop when I think it's you know I'm starting to feel that it's close and I can always come back and do more to it. But if you go too far, it's kind of hard to pull back. Though not impossible. You can always lift colors. You can um, soften some things. I'm just playing in the sky. I do like putting a little peach up in there. I did that the other day in a demonstration. This is my family recipe. My aunt would have me put a little warmth in those clouds. Maybe she's here. Hi, Ellie. I've been lucky to have um, my aunt as my mentor for forever. She's always given me really good advice and I think we all need somebody we can turn to. And it helps to have a really good friend, like my friend, Teresa. Sometimes we will send each other a painting and say, okay, what can I do to make this better? Or the clothes Cindy, are this, is, yeah. this is Anna Marie Stephenson. And I'm curious, can you speak a little bit to um, working with the discipline of being a professional artist about painting when you don't feel like it or when you feel like you are in a, a slow a slow time? Would you be willing to speak to that? Thank you. Yes, um, I haven't had a slow time for a while, but I have different times of my life. And, you know, we all get stuck at some point. And I found the... Um, the book, The Art Spirit, was a really good one for, you know, pushing you a little bit and getting you out and even going on field trips to look at art, something art related. I think 
the best thing to do when you don't feel like doing art is to just do it <laughs> because it's hard to get started, but once you get going, you it's, it comes back and you start to feel that excitement again. So um, as far as working as an artist, I teach all the time and I'm loving it right now. It's a time in my life where I can focus on art and let me put my whole heart and soul into it. So I don't, I don't really need the discipline, but I do know that if I put it on my calendar, make an appointment with myself, it's, it's more likely to happen. And you need to protect that time, just like you would other appointments. You, you, you protect it and take it seriously because... Uh, you know, other people won't take it seriously unless you do. Um, so here's today's demo. I wanted to show you, because we're towards the end. I had fun the, yesterday. I thought, well, let me, I'll try a one color version, which I love doing one color monochromatic paintings. I do them in portraits too. And this is permanent brown, my basic color. So here's, here's a portrait with permanent brown. So that's my basic brown. And then I thought, oh, I'll try another color combination. And I did um, basically peach and turquoise, which is fun. And then here's another one with um, my violet, or Roosevelt marine, green appetite. So just experiment with these wonderful Daniel Smith colors and see what happens. Sometimes it happens the first painting and sometimes you work through it and find the colors that you're excited about. So you play a lot, Cindy. I do. <laughs> I really do. I love experimenting with colors. Yeah. And that is the only way to know those beautiful colors to, to play with. And that is when Anna Marie has the question, what to do when you're stuck. It's just throw color on the paper and you know, very soon you will be in the zone. That's right, it does, it comes back. Yep. We had a follow-up question on Facebook. May I interrupt with the question? The question is, is there a specific reason why you prefer to paint the sky last? Thank you. Oh. Because I want my song to go with the painting. And I don't know for sure what colors I'm going to use when I start. So yes, I, with this painting, I start, I put the sky in last. If the painting is about the sky and it, it, the sky is primarily the main focus, I'll start with the sky. So it just depends on the subject. Good question. So I wanted to say, I really like your jacket. Oh, are, you accomplished, are you accomplished as an embroiderer as well? Are oh, you... no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I got this in Santa Fe yeah. when I was there for watercolor, the plein air convention. Well, I think that was a wonderful thing to get. And I'm, oh, so you. you get lots of compliments. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Cindy, it has been a pleasure having you and showing as you approach. Wonderful to, and so many people watched you and I'm sure they enjoyed it. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Stella. It's great to see you again. And thanks to everybody who made it. I appreciate it. You, Cindy, and I'm sure um, that her painting will be posted so we can see and, and know more about uh, Cindy and, and I'm sure Ethel will put uh, mm -hmm. the, the, all the information about you and web pages and, and wonderful things you're doing. You, you're very busy and you're a prolific painter and very beloved teacher. Oh, and we are so very lucky to have you. Thank you. Are we lucky that we get to paint? It's yes. a great way to spend the time. We are very blessed. Thank you everybody for being here and watching. And please 
uh, come and see the Thursday uh, sessions also. They're very informative, wonderful about colors and people showing their approaches and what do they do with the color? Because the color is the most um, emotional part of a painting and, and everybody has different approach. And the Thursday sessions are about that. So thank you very much all for being there. Thank you. Enjoy seeing thank you. you. Thank 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 you.